My mother was like, you can do everything, anything you like, do whatever makes you happy, but you're gonna play some sports. He played like one year Pee Wee football and it got hot in Texas and he dragged off that field and handed his dad his cleats and helmet and said, I don't wanna do this anymore. I was playing football at that time, even though I really didn't want to, but at that time I, I really didn't care for football. I just, you know, I wanted to play running back. Oh, you can't play running back, you're too big. So I played off of the lineman. Definitely not for me. What was for Garrett, he was discovering in high school, was a love for poetry. My grandmother introduced it to me. I mean, she, she had written poems with me. Some kids, they'd rather die than have any kind of exposure experience of poetry. And so but he was one of the few that jumped right into it. Writing is just something very creative and private for him. As a freshman, Garrett decided to give football another chance. I can probably count on one hand the amount of student athletes that I've had that are into poetry, and that's what I saw when I was saw him sitting in my class. He was an old soul. Well, you didn't see a lot of kids who were athletic, so oh, I'm in the, the poetry club. In high school, I, I kind of, uh, I was kind of lost. Did you think that poetry and athletics were two different things that you either do one or the other and they don't really mix? It was just like, I played the game and I was good at it, but there was something you know, missing. It was kind of that, uh, that passion for the game. So it was kind of hard to, you know, put those two things together for a while to, you know, be you know, okay in my own skin. By his sophomore year, Garrett had grown to six foot three, 210 pounds. His physical gifts were undeniable, but his coaches were looking for more. I felt like he had great potential. And really, the sky was the limit in regards to what he could do. But his work ethic and his level of intensity every day at practice needed to match what that potential was. They saw something in him. So you're either going to put your heart in it or you're not, but you're going to stop wasting people's time. And we just laid it all on the line. Or you can bring your hips home on the bus. He started to realize real quick how talented he was. That kind of opened his eyes a little bit. He, you know, just seeing that and hearing it from us it just really stuck home to him. It took a day of kind of reflection, you know. It was, you know, sit down and thinking, you know, do I really want this? You know, do I really want to play you know, football for all my life? And they said, you no, know, if you really want this, then you have to go get it. You know, you could be one of the best. You could be the best player in the nation. That conversation made him embrace I have the permission now to step on heads. That challenge to become the best was all the motivation Garrett needed. The following season, he doubled his sack total and drew national attention. It was interesting, you know, after you know, I saw him a couple of games, you know, again, him coming in class is just going. So who is this kid? You know, he he sits down. He's quiet. He you know he does all his work. It's great. And here he is, just you know wrecking shop every chance he gets in the football field. He was relentless with his effort, which now matched his freakish athletic ability and size and speed and strength. When I say make a difference, I'm talking about within three or four plays, it's it's game over. By 2014. Garrett was a five-star recruit. At six foot four, 240 pounds, he was the nation's top-ranked edge rusher. Miles' recruitment, I mean, it was a circus. We had 15, 20 college coaches here uh, on any given day. Miles just exploded on the scene. You know, the guy's the number one player at his position, maybe one number one player in the country. Uh, that's one thing. But when you see him in, in person, you knew he was going to be successful. If I go and make my commitment right now, I'm going to make it to Texas A&M. Yeah. As a freshman at Texas A&M, Garrett broke the SEC record with 11 and a half sacks. By the end of his junior year, he declared for the 2017 NFL Draft. He's got speed, he's got strength, work ethic. He's got it all. There was no doubt in my mind that he was going to be the 
first player picked in the draft. But another Hall of Famer wasn't convinced. A few days prior to the draft, Warren Sapp made these comments about Garrett. I see a lazy kid that makes four plays a game. This is the number one guy? Four days after Sapp's comments, Garrett and his mother took to social media. What's your response to Warren Sapp's comments? Is he still relevant? Uh, oh. Hey, mama. Is he still relevant? I, I repeat it. Is, I, is he still? I, mm. no, so you don't want me to answer because that mean streak in me comes out. It's one thing if you want to critique him as a player based on his skill set. To me, Warren stepped over the line and came at my child as a person who you don't know. And his relevancy towards how we raised our son, you need to check yourself. Garrett's talent was undeniable, but as the draft approached, his passion for the game was still being called into question. Say what you want. I mean, doubt me, disrespect me, say whatever you like, but I'm going to prove you wrong at the end of the day. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.